Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome back to our channel, Home is Where Our Heart Is. Firstly, I'd like to thank you all for joining us here today on this beautiful, crisp, fresh autumn morning. The sun is rising behind me and it's igniting the sky in the beautiful, autumnal, vibrant colours of oranges and reds. The autumn is an inspiring time of year. The trees, leaves and the skies all glowing and flowing and transforming colours together. So what better way today than to celebrate the colours of autumn than to dive into the brilliant bright red world of rose hips, the fruit of the romantic rose. They are super rich nutritionally and powerfully rich medicinally too. So if you are interested, then come for a walk in the countryside with me and we'll celebrate the world of rose hips. We'll look at their nutritional and medicinal properties, maybe explore some mythology and folklore, then we'll take some home and we'll learn how to preserve them so we can enjoy rose hip tea all year long. But first, I invite you to just take a moment with me and embrace the sunrise. So here we have our first wild rose bush. Look at the colours. That incredible vibrant red is almost glowing throughout the countryside. These little fruits never stop blowing my mind because who would have thought that the world famous romantic rose bed fruit? Incredible. Now this fruit is extra special in many, many ways. Firstly, it's known as the dog rose because once upon a time throughout history, it was the wild rose that you'd run to if you got bitten by a wild ravenous dog. You'd run to a wild, wild, little wild rose bush and dig up the roots and make a tonic because it was thought that the roots of the wild rose that bears the rose hip fruit is the cure and would stop you from getting rabies and infections and all them bad things that come from getting bitten by a wild dog. Now, other than that, these little fruits are an absolute miracle of nutrition because these little rose hips actually contain more vitamin C than oranges. 100 grams of oranges contains 53 milligrams of vitamin C, whereas 100 grams of rose hips contains a mind-blowing 426 milligrams of vitamin C. That's more than eight times the amount of vitamin C in rose hips. Not only are they rich in vitamin C, but rose hips are also rich in vitamins A, B5 and vitamin E. So why is it so important to understand that rose hips are so incredibly rich in vitamin C? Well, us as human beings actually are one of the rare mammals on earth that can't and we don't create our own vitamin C within our bodies. We have to seek out and find vitamin C in our environment and consume it. If we don't have any vitamin C, first we start feeling tired, we lose our appetite, we get sick, but ultimately we get what the pirates used to get called scurvy. And that basically means that without vitamin C, we get sick and tired, we'll eventually turn yellow, our teeth will fall out and we die. So vitamin C is very, very essential to our life. So before we go any further, I'm gonna collect some of these beautiful bright red vibrant rose hips and make a fresh cup of rose hip tea for the rest of our journey. Ah, 
So this beautiful morning that was fresh and warm has now turned into a, a moody, stormy autumn day. And it's been raining heavy for about half an hour now. So it's a good time to just stop and take a moment to bask in the ambiance of whatever weather Mother Nature provides. To make a fresh rose hip tea, this fruity herbal tea, all you do is take a handful of rose hips, simmer them for about 10 minutes until the water takes on a nice rose hip colour, and then you have a fresh herbal tea. Ah, oh, it's very warming when you're in the woods on a now a cold stormy morning like this. Now fresh rose hip tea is great, but of course when you cook it, it lowers the nutritional value. It doesn't remove it, just reduces it. So what you want to do ideally is take the rose hips home and dry them out and preserve them. And that's what we're going to do in a little while. But we're just going to wait for this big rain cloud to pass over and then we'll get back to celebrating the world of rose hips. A wise man once said, some people feel the rain, others just get wet. So it looks like this storm might be here to stay. It keeps raining heavily on and off, but you know what they say, you won't see any rainbows if you don't endure any storms. So let's get back to celebrating this incredible wild edible, the fruit of the rose, the rose hip. The rose hip isn't just an absolute miracle of nutrition when it comes to vitamin C, it's also a powerhouse of medicinal properties. And one of the main things that gives the rose hip its medicinal properties is its color. The pigment of rose hip, the thing that makes it red, is full of lycopene and carotene. And these are proven to be great for our eyes as well as amazing for our skin. The rose hip also is packed full of antioxidants that are really good for reducing inflammation in our bodies. Now the rose hips have been used for their food and medicine for centuries and centuries. The rose itself can be dated all the way back for 35 million years. The rose has blessed this planet for 35 million years. Can you believe that? They found fossil evidence of the rose existing all the way back then. Now, of course, being on this earth for so long means that people have had access to this beautiful fruit, the fruit of the rose, for thousands of years. The ancient Greeks, Romans, Egyptians, even the Vikings all harnessed the power of the rose hips and they all used them for similar things. They used them for, of course, reducing inflammation of their achy bones and joints, as well as boosting their immune system and giving themselves healthy hearts. They all used to have rose hips in their diet to help them stay healthy and strong. They also used rose hips for reducing the pain of arthritis and headaches and they infused it with oils and applied it to their skin for its anti-aging properties. Now, these ancient herbal remedies are amazing and what's incredible about them is they've been proven true by modern studies today. Modern studies on rose hips have shown that they are a great natural remedy for reducing the pain and inflammation caused by arthritis. They've also been shown to be good for our heart and boost our immune systems and they've even been shown to have anti-aging properties. That's why you'll find rose hips in many of the expensive anti-aging beauty products in the shops today. How incredible is that? Time and time again these ancient herbal remedies that would fall into the category of being a folk remedy get proven accurate by modern studies today. Now Rose hips, the amazing thing about rose hips is if you want to buy them in the store, they're sold in the posh health food stores and they cost quite a bit of money. But luckily for us, all good things are wild and free and rose hips grow abundantly all around us. We personally at home make rose hip syrup, rose hip cordial, rose hip 
infused oils and rosehip tea and we've made tutorials on how you can make all these at home for free if you wait till the end of this video they'll pop up and you can click them and it will take you straight to it and we'll teach you how to make these rosehip recipes and remedies now just before we head home and preserve rose hips so we can enjoy the health boosting properties of rose hips all year long first we need to make sure that we've got the right plant and we know how to identify rose hips firstly you have the branches these rose branches with them obvious rose thorns now be wary of these because they're very sharp then of course you have the fruits the fruit of the rose the basis of this entire video the rose hip rose hips are an oval shape and the wild ones are bright red with a little dried hat on the top when you open the rose hip you'll see that it's full of seeds on the inside now this is what makes rose hips a little more difficult to bring into our diet because you don't want to eat these seeds these seeds are covered in fine irritating itchy hairs if you're feeling mischievous you can grind them up and they make an itching powder but you don't want to eat them they're not poisonous but what goes in must come out and unfortunately if you eat the seeds of rose hips you'll get a very itchy bum the next day <laughs> now traditionally rose hips are collected after the first frost the colder the weather gets the sweeter the rose hips are but because we're making tea today we're going to just collect them how they are because it's pretty early in autumn now we use wild rose hips because they're the sweetest but you can use any rose hips all rose hips are edible here's some that i didn't steal from an old lady's garden on the way here all rose hips are edible as well as all rose flowers are actually edible too so if you fancy making a rose hip syrup or cordial or whatever you fancy out of different shaped rose hips that's fine just make sure they've not been treated by any chemicals now if you are eager and you really want to try one of the rose hip recipes and all the wild rose hips around you are still quite hard all you have to do is collect them just how you would put them in a bag in the freezer overnight when you unfreeze them in the morning you've faked the frost you've tricked the rose hips and they'll go all squidgy and soft and sweet and make them great for them recipes now as you could imagine 35 million years of history has led this beautiful plant the rose the rose hip to become absolutely surrounded in history mythology and folklore for one the rose hip would be found on like the viking ships and they'd drink rose hip tea and this would keep them healthy and strong on their long adventures across the sea and of course the mythology and folklore of the rose centers around love and romance in all the cultures around the world and one of my favorite ones is the greek mythology they believed that the rose came from the goddess of love aphrodite when she was born she raised from the ocean and the white foam that dripped off her body wherever it landed white roses grew and they believed that the white rose represented purity but later in life Aphrodite was passionately pursuing a man called Adonis and when she was pursuing him she accidentally cut her foot on a rose and her blood dripped upon the rose and turned them red representing passion and love now I think that the rose and the rose hips is an incredible incredible plant and we could be here talking about the mythology and folklore all day long but what I just want to think about is all through history Egyptians Greeks Europeans we all give each other roses as a, as a gift of love a sign of affection and that's a beautiful thing and I can't help but wonder do we do this just because the rose is beautiful or did the rose hip fruit also have something to do with this anyway we've got enough rose hips now to go home and make some tea so let's head home to Steli and we'll teach you how to preserve rose hips and make some rose hip tea
And we are home with Steli. Thanks for collecting all these amazing rose hips. You're My welcome. favourite. <laughs> so we're going to teach you how to make all the variations of rose hip tea. Super easy peasy. Come with us and show you how to do it. So the first thing you're going to do is give your rose hips a wash. And then pick off all your green stems, just pop them aside. To naturally dry your rose hips, to make them last all year round until they come back around next year, you just thread them on to a string like this and just hang them up wherever and they'll dry naturally. And they also make a great house decoration. So you want to stab it in, you have to use quite a lot of pressure because they're quite tough and then boop, thread it on. So guys, mind your fingers when you're threading these because it is a sharp needle after all. Pop it in and if you'll find that the rose hips are really firm, just give them a little whack with a hammer. So to reduce the chances of your rose hips going bad when drying, you see these ones on the end are dried perfectly. These middle ones are also drying perfectly too. But these ones on the end, you notice they've all drooped down and are squishing together. And that's really going to affect the drying process and they might even go bad. So if you want to reduce your chances of the rose hips going bad, all you do is simply thread a bead in between each rose hip and this will stop them squishing into each other and reduce the chances of them going mouldy. Now, this is the natural way you can dry your rose hips, which of course is the best way, preserves all the goodness, but you can also dehydrate them in your oven. The first way you can do that is by simply dehydrating them whole, put them on a tray and dehydrate away in a moment, or you can chop them in half and they'll dehydrate quicker. So if you're deciding to dry them whole, then put them in the oven on its lowest heat with the door slightly ajar for around eight to nine hours and that will dry them out whole like this. But if you've chopped them in half, then you can put them in the oven and it takes six to seven hours to completely dry them out. When it comes to rose hips and rose hip tea, there's actually many, many different variations and techniques to making it. Of course, firstly, you have the natural drying way, and this preserves all the goodness, and this gives you the best, most nutritious rose hip result. But then, of course, you have the dehydration method, which you do in the oven or your dehydrator, and then you can dry them whole like this, which takes a longer amount of time, or you can chop them in half and dry them like this. This is the quickest way of drying them, the dehydrating way in your oven, but then when you make the tea, you have to filter it because you don't want to get these itchy hairs, of course, in your cup of tea. To make a cup of delicious rose hip tea, if you're using chopped dried rose hips, just add the equivalent of two teaspoons to your reusable tea bag or to what other filtering device that you may have. Add to your cup and add your hot water. This water has been boiled a minute ago, but it's not boiling now. It's just nice and hot. Then just let that stew like you would a regular cup of tea until it starts taking on that nice rose hip colour. If you're using whole dried rose hips, just take three 
or four per cup of tea. Add them to your cup, then add your hot water again. Just let that stew, just like a regular cup of tea, until it takes on the rosy colour. Now these are great, great teas, really good for you. And if you want to really get the best out of your rose hips, then simply take a container, add some rose hips. Maybe a few more, just for good luck. Add your warm water. Then what you'll do is put that container aside and just leave that overnight. And then by the next day, it will be cold, but it will have a really rich rose hip color. And that's the best way if you're going for the nutrients. When you use them whole, they take a lot longer to infuse than if you use them chopped up and dried. This is how we personally like to do it, chopped and dried, whole jars of chopped and dried. And that gives you the best rose hip tea. And it's nice, just like this. Mmm, rose hippy. But there's also one special edition. Ta da! Rose hip syrup. So, this is going to give our tea that extra rosy sweet flavour. If you haven't made rose hip syrup, recipe can be found on our YouTube channel. Do a little stirring. Okay, I'm really excited guys because there is nothing more romantic than having a cup of rose hip tea with your nearest and dearest. Mm, amazing. Cheers. Cheers. Taste test time. Wild rose hip tea. Oh yes. So nice guys, so so good. Tastes amazing and it's great for you and wild and free. Yeah, on your winter warmers, get out with your loved one and pick yourself some rose hips and yeah. enjoy some rosy tea. A beautiful fresh rose hip tea. As always people, it's been a pleasure. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and ring that little bell so you get notifications whenever we upload a video. And also, um, if you haven't already, check us out on Instagram and we've also got uh, Facebook, we're on Facebook. <laughs> and there's also Patreon as well. So thank yeah. you so much, guys. All our Patreon supporters, we yeah. love you so much. Big love to our Patreons. You make our videos possible. And if you're interested in joining our Patreon, then the video will pop up at the end of this video that explains all about our Patreon and all about the recipes in this video too. Peace.